Hello beautiful people, my name is Axinia and I would like to welcome you to the Internal Medicine Residency Bootcamp video series. This video series will encompass everything you need to know about your first year of Internal Medicine Residency and how to prepare for it in order to be the best intern and subsequently the best resident you can possibly be. There will be different types of videos, like this one for example will be on what to do before starting residency. The upcoming ones will be dedicated on medical apps that you must have on your phone during residency, medical gadgets that you need to possess before the 1st of July when you start residency, what to do on your first day of residency and most importantly what not to do and just general advice is how to be successful. And the other videos will be dedicated on medical content like most common pages, how not to freak out and how to handle them properly, uh, know your treatment videos of the most common cases you will come across with etc. So overall this series will be very comprehensive, we're gonna have a lot of fun and I believe these videos will be very useful to all of you who are about to start living the dream of being in residency and practicing medicine in the United States. I decided to start this series most of all because I'm almost finishing my first PGY1 year in internal medicine residency and I know pretty much all the pits and falls and the do's and don'ts as well as all of that beautiful journey you're about to embark upon and I just wanted to share all of that with you. Video number one from our bootcamp series is dedicated on the five must-dos before starting residency or how to emotionally, physically and mentally prepare yourself for the most exciting year of your life. Must-do number one is of course finish your USMLE Step 3 exam before starting residency. As you may know nowadays as the competition for residency spots for international medical graduates especially is fierce, everyone is trying to apply for residency with the most competitive application that can possibly exist. And that includes passing step 3 even before applying for residency. Now if you have matched already, congratulations, and you're about to start residency in July, my number one advice for you is to sit down, study and pass the USMLE step 3 before July 1st. Normally the rule is that your first attempt to pass step 3 must occur during your PGY1 year and you must pass step 3 before the end of your PGY2 year if you want to be able to continue to PGY3 year. So again my advice is do not drag the exam, do not postpone taking it as most people do as if you think that you will have time to study during your PGY1, you are sadly mistaken, especially if you match in a busy hospital, which is the case for most matching IMGs every year. Now the challenging part of taking step 3 before residency is that the second part of the step 3, as you may know, is dealing with online interactive clinical scenarios, for which you can prepare online of course, but it's not the same as you actually having practiced it in real life but it is doable, a lot of people have done it before you, so you can do it too. So to sum it up, the pros for passing step 3 before July 1st is that you will have no mental burden of unfinished business during your busy PGY1 year. Easily secure PGY2 spot in a program of your choice if you are preliminary. Preliminary means that you are in the current program only for one year. You will not have to study OBGYN, PED, etc. during your internal medicine residency because once you're done with step 3, no more PEDs, no more OBGYN for you, all right? And the disadvantage of taking step 3 before even starting residency is that the CCS cases will be more difficult to approach without clinical experience but again, many people before you have done it, so you can do it too. Number two of our five must-dos before starting residency is to watch some YouTube pre-residency videos, the way I call them. For example, you might want to watch some procedures videos on how to put peripheral line or how to draw venous blood, arterial blood, how to put central line in the neck or in the groin. You know, things like that. It's a good thing to know how to do these things, right? We all have different experiences and different skill sets, some of us might know how to do this, some of us might not know. So for you guys who don't know or you have forgotten, it's been a while, then it's a good idea to watch these kinds of videos. 
Another super important video to watch before starting residency, in my opinion, is bedside ultrasound videos. It's a big plus, believe me, to know your way around with the ultrasound as a PGY1 and bedside. Another super important video to watch is head to toe physical exam videos. You might want to brush off on those skills, it's super super important. There are good videos on YouTube. Uh, maybe even get your step 2 CCS notes, right? That's why they made us take this kind of exam, so we are prepared for real life patients. But remember, no matter where you are in internal medicine residency, like regular medical floor or you're in the ICU or you're in ambulatory or clinics, you must always, always examine your patients thoroughly. You must always take pride of your physical examination skills right and you must be able to interpret your findings and describe them properly in your notes and i'm sure your physical exam is great as it is already but it won't hurt if you watch some videos again before residency number three is prepare your mind and body for residency pick up a sport all right i'm very much a strong mind and strong body type of person and i love working out i love swimming running walking I love exercising every time I get a chance and it is scientifically proven as you might know that not only is working out a way to relieve stress but it actually makes you healthier because it lowers your cancer risks and happier especially aerobic exercises they increase production and release of serotonin so you'll be very very happy after a good workout and trust me residency is so emotionally challenging at times that there were days my whole body would hurt after I came back home from work without me doing any physical activity whatsoever during the whole day. And uh, also residency is not always quite the way you imagine it. It is more, sometimes it is more like sitting down in front of your computer and uh, reviewing charts, writing notes, looking at imaging studies, etc. And um, some days are busy, some days you have to run around and do a lot of things and uh, the more fit you are the more your body can take and the more work you can get done faster so you can go home and get some rest right another thing that you might consider is meditation and or yoga mental health guys very important sit down with yourself and figure out what makes you calm what helps you quiet your mind because believe me, residency, as I said, is emotionally exhausting. You're dealing with people every day. And if you cannot control your thoughts, your emotions, feelings of anger sometimes, frustration, sadness, you will have a hard time in residency. Meditation is very good. Yoga is super good. Make it a habit, you know. Uh, I know it's a lot to ask, but trust me, it helps keep your sanity during residency. I could recommend you, uh, there are some good introductory videos to meditation by real monks that they know what they're talking about and they will help you understand what meditation is first of all. If you're not familiar with it at all, then you can sit every morning for 10 minutes in a quiet room, letting your thoughts run through your head but not affecting your mood. Another super important thing for me, in my opinion, to prep your mind and body for residency is to stock up on supplements. Just to make it clear, I'm not advertising no supplements whatsoever here, just saying that coffee and chocolate is not going to be enough to keep you healthy, alright? You will be so exhausted that eating healthy will be the least of your concerns, alright? And most people kind of damage their health and either gain or lose tremendous amounts of weight just because they eat too much junk food in the hospital out of stress or they don't eat anything but drink coffee again out of stress both not good uh, some suggestions of supplements would be vitamin c of course for good strong immune system you know a lot of infections a lot of sick people in the hospitals uh, vitamin D, especially in winter time, where it will be very hard for you to um, get any sun whatsoever. Vitamin A, very important for your eyes, because as I said, you will be staring at computers way too much. And B12 and B9 to help you make stronger cells, especially if you're vegan. Um, me personally, I usually do pretty good with food because I'm very conscious about this. And I always prefer eating the food than taking supplements. This is very important. 
Uh, but when it's a busy and a long rotation like MICU or admitting team, I practically live on coffee and sugar during the day, which is, which is terrible, right? I also take uh, green tea capsules, moringa capsules, all those superfood, you know, chia seeds, bee pollen. Any superfood that you can get your hands on is, is, is going to be great. Remember, healthy mind in healthy body, right? You're here for the long run. Give it your all to residency and your patients, but take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you will be of no use to anyone if you burn out or be sick all the time, right? And the only way to provide excellent care for your patients because you love your job is only if you're healthy and happy enough to do so. Number four from our five must-dos before starting residency is get your health checkups in check. The fact is that you will be working six days a week and chances are your only free day will be Sunday. Not many doctors working on Sunday now, do they? Another fact is that you will be working long, long hours. You will be going home way after the closing time of many doctors' offices. So, my advice is, if you need any medical attention, get it before July 1st. Including trivial things like getting your eyes checked. Oh God, please do get your eyes checked. I mentioned already long hours in front of computers, writing notes, reviewing charts, it did stuff on the eyes. Oh, what else? Getting some fillings done. People walk around with missing fillings <laughs> for months before they get a chance to see a dentist. It can be a big problem. So you might not believe me now and you might laugh, but you will see when you start residency. And of course, not to mention if you need any surgeries, uh, like tooth extraction, wisdom teeth extraction, ligaments repair and etc just get them done before residency and number five is of course rest and rest well seriously after you take step three <laughs> right <laughs> we are clear about the step three just go on vacation a long long vacation get as much sun as you can possibly get as much sleep as you can possibly get and enjoy your life as much as possible before july 1st before you dive into residency when your life will practically not belong to you anymore but to your patients. And don't ever forget that starting July 1st as a PGY1 internal medicine resident, you will be living the dream, which is what you fought for for so many years until now, right? You studied so hard, you passed exams, your application was perfect, you matched in your hospital of your choice. And now you're starting residency. It will be tough, it will be rough, it will be difficult, it will be emotionally exhausting. But remember, this is you living your dream, which many of your colleagues with the same dream can only dream of. All right, beautiful people, I really hope you found this video and my advice is useful. I truly, truly believe that every single one of them will be so beneficial for you. And this is me speaking from personal experience. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, ideas, tips from your experience, please feel free to share them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon with the next videos from our Internal Medicine Residency Bootcamp series.